99% of vloggers will never make it big on YouTube. Instead, every video they hit publish on will get lost in the void of the 1 billion hours of footage that gets uploaded to YouTube every single day. Never to be watched by anyone except maybe your mom and grandma. But why? Vlogging is a really popular genre, right? Why is it so dang difficult to succeed in the vlogging space on YouTube? And what kind of secret sauce do successful vloggers have that allow them to rake in the views while the rest of us are just trying our best to get by? In this video, we're gonna explore all of that and hopefully learn a few tips about how you might be able to start a successful vlogging channel of your own. Okay, let's just kick this off by addressing the biggest reason why most vlog channels on YouTube fail. And I'll be honest, this is gonna sound a bit harsh, but it's true. It's that no one cares. Now I know. This sounds like what a lot of the boomer critics of social media content will say, like, nobody cares what you ate for breakfast. <laughs> but here's the thing. Sometimes I do in fact care what a stranger on the internet had for breakfast. And figuring out how to make people care is a part of that vlogger secret sauce that I was talking about before. And we're gonna touch on that later. But here's the thing. It's not that these, you know, seemingly mundane parts of your everyday life that are usually included in vlogs can't be interesting. They definitely can be. It's just that the way most beginner vloggers are presenting them in their videos is not that engaging. A lot of people assume vlogging is just sharing your everyday life, showing what you're up to, taking your audience along for a day in your life. And on the surface, that is how it feels when you watch a vlog. But there's a lot more intention and planning that needs to go into a successful vlog, a vlog that's gonna be engaging and captivating to new and returning viewers. And I think that is really the linchpin here when it comes to how to make a vlog actually gain views and you know become a successful YouTube channel. It's connecting with your existing audience, but also making your content interesting and engaging to new people. So let's just talk about what this actually looks like in practice. I see a lot of beginner vloggers doing this type of thing in their videos. So as you guys will remember, last week I started my pottery classes. Sarah told me this hilarious story about her cat. Let me update you on that meal plan that I started in the last video. And look, I get why people do this. It feels familiar, it feels casual, and the number one rule of vlogging is you wanna talk to your camera like it's your friend. You want to be open, authentic, relatable, all of those buzzwords. And you know, that is how we talk to our friends. But here's the important thing. That's not how we talk to new friends. That's how we talk to people who already know us and already know what's been going on in our lives. When it comes to growing a vlog channel, which when you think about it, okay, growing a vlog channel, what does that entail? Getting new people, who've never seen or heard of you before to become interested in your life. So that's like making new friends, getting them acquainted with who you are, what you do and what your story is. So in that case, we need to provide a little bit more context, right? So maybe instead of, Sarah told me this hilarious story about her cat. You might try, you'll never guess what Sarah's cat did last week. In case you're new here, Sarah is one of my best friends and her adorable cat Nala is known for doing hilarious things. So that's just a very basic example of how you can add more context, make sure that your content is welcoming to new viewers, but let's talk about how some really successful vloggers do it. Big vlog channels are gonna make sure that every single video they post is just as interesting for returning viewers as it is for people that are brand new to the channel, have never seen their content before. This is key because again, what's the biggest hurdle when it comes to growing your channel? It's getting new people who don't know who you are to become invested in who you are. So you need to make sure that every vlog you make is just as interesting to somebody brand new. Some of my absolute favorite vloggers who are very, very good at this are Craig and Amy from King In It. They are an adventure travel channel. And I love how at the beginning of every video, they include a custom intro montage that kind of acquaints the viewer with who they are and what they do and what the video is gonna be about. And what I think is so genius about this is it's not your kind of classic 
theme song or standard YouTube intro because they make this different for every video, which means for me as somebody who watches every single one of their videos, it's fun and interesting every time because there's new jokes in it, there's clips from different videos in it that I might recognize from you know years past, but it's also very effective at helping a brand new viewer get acquainted with what their channel is about, what you can expect from their videos. What is happening guys? We're Craig and Amy and you are watching King In It. If you're new around here, let's give you a quick background on King In It. I'll be honest, like this kind of thing is a lot of work. Like I have a lot of respect for the amount of work that King In It put into their videos and I would say they're definitely above and beyond like standard vlogs, but this is a channel that makes vlog style videos about travel and adventure and they do it so successfully. Like I'm seriously blown away by their like view to subscribe ratio it's really impressive and that's because they get a lot of views from people who don't know who they are yet which is how you grow so if you want your vlog channel to be successful really really think about how you can make your videos just as interesting to someone who doesn't know you yet as it is for someone who is really well acquainted with you and your journey and make sure you stick around to my third point in this video because i'm going to talk a bit more in depth about exactly how you can make your videos interesting to new people Another key skill that all successful vloggers and really YouTubers in general have is understanding their analytics. When you start to understand what all those confusing numbers in YouTube studio mean, then you can start to understand what parts of your video keep your viewer engaged, what parts you could cut out, and what thumbnails and titles are gonna be most effective at getting people to click on your videos. If you're looking for a tool to help you better interpret your analytics, then I'm super excited to introduce you to the sponsor of today's video, Dash Hudson. I'll be real, Dash Hudson is the most like elegant, aesthetic, beautiful, well-designed social media analytics platform that I've ever tried. It's super clean dashboards and easy to use design make it perfect for someone who's starting to figure out this whole social media analytics thing. Plus, I'm very excited to announce that Dash Hudson has just recently released a new suite of tools, including insights for TikToks, for Reels. That's right, insights for Reels people, and also YouTube insights, which is super exciting. You can easily browse your analytics by platform. Once you get your different social accounts synced with your Dash Hudson account, there's just one easy drop down to switch between different platforms. And you can even create custom dashboards, which I think is super cool. So you can organize the metrics that are most important to you to be all in one place. So it's accessible at a glance. And you can dive even deeper with custom content analysis. You can add tags to your videos. You can compare videos by topic, by format. So you can really dive deep into what your audience is most interested in. So if you wanna try out Dash Hudson for yourself, you can totally do that using the link in the description. Just go ahead and click there to sign up, to start analyzing your YouTube insights and get a sense of what's working for your audience and what you might be able to improve on. In general, when it comes to the YouTube algorithm and being successful, whether it's in the vlogging niche or any other type of video, there's really two main metrics that you wanna look out for and optimize for in order to get your video served on more home pages. Those two metrics are watch time and click through rate. And you'll know that they're important because if you go into YouTube Studio, these are the two metrics that YouTube is reporting on right at the top of your dashboard for your most recent video. Essentially, if you can get a higher click-through rate, which means like the percentage of people who saw your thumbnail and then like clicked play on it, that indicates to YouTube that you've got an enticing topic. You've got something that's catchy, that's interesting, that will keep people on the platform if they stumble across your video on the homepage. If you can increase your watch time, that tells the YouTube algorithm that your video is worth clicking on. It's interesting, it's engaging, it keeps people around till the very end. So keep an eye out for your click-through rate and your watch time on your vlogs and try to figure out what people are clicking on and what people are watching till the end. There's many different strategies that you can use to increase these two metrics, but I don't have time to cover it all in this video. So let me know in the comments if you would want some more YouTube strategy videos and I can like dive into strategies for increasing click-through rate and watch time. Another major component to crafting a successful vlog is telling a cohesive story and setting up that story from the very beginning of your video. This is the mistake that I see a lot of beginner vloggers make, and I will be totally honest in saying, I myself have done this in a lot of my vlogs, and I get it. It's a very natural thing to do. 
if you don't do any pre-planning or preparation or kind of like story building, this is what you just automatically will do. But you'll probably see why it's maybe not all that interesting. Okay, so this is how a lot of beginners approach vlogging. They just go about it as if they're documenting their day, checking in with the camera as if it's like a little like diary or log where every time they do something new, they pick up the camera and say, hey, and now I'm here making lunch. Hey, and now I'm here going to get coffee. Basically the structure of this beginner kind of lackluster vlog is I did this and then I did this and then I did this and then I did this. And you know, that can maybe be interesting if the stuff that you're doing is like out of this world, like crazy. But you know, if you're making just like an everyday life kind of vlog, you can see how that gets to be a bit boring. So this is how the big vloggers do it that keep us engaged from beginning to end. Instead of structuring their vlog like I did this and then I did this and then I did this, they structure their vlog like I did this because I did this Therefore, I did that and on and on and on. The distinction here is that instead of just making it like a string of events that just seem to happen, you want to set up your vlog like a story where there's some causality, there's some connection from one event to the next. It sets up motivation, it sets up curiosity, it sets up conflict and then eventually payoff. Even though yes, vlogs are obviously supposed to be nonfiction, it's not like you are you know, telling a fake story or creating fake characters. But I think it is important that you find the story in the truth of it. Like there is a story to be told about what happened in your day or what happened on your trip. You just need to figure out how to frame it like that. When you're thinking about your vlog, you really need to be asking yourself at every turn, why would somebody care about this? Why is this interesting? What's the takeaway? And I'll be honest, like this is the kind of thing that you're gonna wanna think about ahead of time because it's very difficult to, on the fly, try to figure out what the moral of your story is. And that's why like the most successful vlogging style channels are not just like day in the life or, you know, follow me as I do this or that. Like there's certain events or challenges or undertakings that let's be real, the vloggers decide to do specifically because it'll make an interesting video. And you don't necessarily need to do that. Like I think that it is possible to document your life and kind of turn that into an engaging vlog without you like setting out to like, I'm gonna survive on a desert island for a week or something. Like you can do it about your average life. But I think it's good if you think about ahead of time, what can I do to turn this into a story? What can I do to make this like an inspiring takeaway? Or what additional value can I add that's gonna keep people watching? So let's just say for example, you do wanna just do like a work day in my life. Like let's say I was gonna make a vlog where I brought you along with what I do in my typical work day. Naturally, that is gonna end up in that kind of first structure that I talked about. I did this and then I did this and then I did this. But for me to think about how I might make it interesting, I could talk about, you know, a certain challenge that I'm trying to overcome or an insecurity that I'm working through and build that into the story of my day. Like for example, if during that day I was gonna be like filming a YouTube video on a topic that I was a little bit nervous about, at the start of the video, I would set it up like, today I need to finally film this video. I've been putting it off because honestly, I'm a little bit nervous about it. Hopefully I feel a little bit more confident when the time comes. And then throughout the day, I could keep returning to that and talk about like, this is why I feel like this is challenging for me. And like, here's why I'm nervous. And these are the things that I'm doing to try to overcome it. And you can see how something as simple as like feeling intimidated to do, you know, one task of your work can turn into a story of you overcoming an obstacle. You can see how even the most mundane seeming things can become a story if you just look for the meaning in it and try to communicate that clearly and set it up from the beginning of your video, even if that means going back and filming a section for the intro after you film the rest of the video to kind of tee up whatever that conflict or that moral of the story might be. Honestly, there are so many other tips and tricks other than just speaking to a new audience as well as your returning audience, understanding your analytics and telling a cohesive story that go into having a successful vlog channel. I am a very long time connoisseur of vlogs. I've made my own vlogs. I've had mixed success with that. And I have observed a lot of really successful vloggers 
rise to fame. And I find it really, really interesting to analyze what successful YouTube creators are doing and how that is like translating into more views and more subscribers for them. So if you wanna see more videos breaking down some of these strategies, let me know in the comments because I would definitely love to make some more. Y'all know I love to share my hottest Instagram tips, but YouTube was definitely my first love. I've been making YouTube videos since before 2011. That's when I started this channel. And yeah, I'd love to talk about it too, if you're interested. Now, if you wanna learn why creating a YouTube channel actually instead of an Instagram might be your best move as a creator right now, then definitely check out this video that I made. And as always, thank you so much for watching. I hope that you're having adventures and following your dreams and I will see you in that video. Okay, bye.